Hello everyone, uh, this is uh, the second podcast I make this year and it's about the immune system. Uh, I've made few ch- uh, changes, to the few improvements to, the, to my podcast, so hopefully they'll have an impact. As usual, I appreciate any feedback after you see this video and you see me in the class. Okay, so we'll start a new topic uh, next class, which is about the immune system. And I want you to, to watch this video so that you all get to the same level and then we can start therefore with with me ev- knowing that everyone knows the same or have the same background. So this uh, podcast or this PowerPoint is only about uh, an introduction. Uh, so well, of course most of you know about the immune system. It's the system that protects the body against foreign invaders like uh, bacteria, like viruses, like parasites and protects us from getting diseases or problems from these uh, invaders. So it's a very important system and we cannot survive without it. Now, what may invade our body? That's what we'll talk about today. Usually you all uh, are used to the word microbes. When you say, okay, what may cause uh, what may cause a disease? It's a microbe. In fact, the word microbe doesn't mean something that causes disease. Microbes means microorganisms, which are organisms very very small that can only be seen by a microscope. So, uh, like bacteria, virus, yeast, mold, whatever. So that's it. Microbes are organisms that are small and cannot be seen only by a microscope. They uh, they are not necessarily dangerous for us or harmful. In fact, some microbes like these ones here uh, live in our intestinal tract, so they help us in digestion and they are very essential for us. Other microbes like the yeast uh, help in baking cakes or bread or uh, so a lot of microbes are beneficial for us. Now, some of the microbes are bad for us, or they cause diseases, and we call these pathogens. So, not all microbes are pathogens, and pathogens are the microbes that cause problems in us. Okay? Pathogens may range from types of bacteria, types of viruses, types of parasites, like this worm, for example. Uh, this worm lives in our in our stomach and causes problems, causes diseases, it is considered a pathogen. Now, from these types, in the, in this podcast, I want to talk about two types of pathogens, which, which are the bacteria and the virus. Okay. Now, you, you always hear this, this, uh, this disease is caused by a bacteria, this disease is caused by a virus, but what is the difference between bacteria and virus? In fact, the difference is huge. The bacteria is a cell that has a DNA, that has a cytoplasm, that has a membrane, that lives, that eats, that uh, releases waste, that reproduces, so it's a living organism. The virus is less than that. The virus is only a a nucleic acid, which uh, DNA or RNA, uh, having uh, proteins around it, and that's it. It doesn't have cytoplasm, it cannot eat, it cannot uh, reproduce on its own. That's the main difference. Bacteria can reproduce on its own. We have a bacteria it splits into two. The virus requires another cell which we call a host cell that it enters and then it reproduces using the machinery inside that cell. So it's like in, it enslaves the cell and start producing other viruses. But on its own, a virus on its own cannot split. So if we summarize the differences between bacteria and virus, the bacteria are larger, the virus are much smaller, the bacteria are single-celled or microorganisms, the virus is less than a cell, Uh, bacteria contain a chromosome, a cell wall, cytoplasm, cell membrane, all of these which are functions of life, Uh, the virus doesn't contain these, it has a DNA surrounded by a protein coat, and sometimes it has a cell membrane, (coughs) Sometimes it doesn't. There's no cytoplasm, no nucleus, no ribosomes. It has few enzymes which help in, uh, in the, uh, which help it to attack the cell. Okay, uh, bacteria. This is capable of independent reproduction. If there is enough food, enough space, the bacteria splits and creates a lot more bacteria. Uh, the virus cannot 
do that it needs another cell to go into and use it to reproduce so the bacteria feed excrete or release waste grow hence it's a living thing the virus do not feed do not excrete do not grow it's a non-living thing so these are the main things they are like the introduction for the immune system uh, hopefully that's that was helpful and we can start from there and see you in the class next class okay bye